Hi, hi, friends. If you're listening to this video on the go and can't take notes, we've made a nice looking PDF outline of main ideas for you to print and save for future reference. You can find the message outline by clicking on the link below. Enjoy. Hello dear hearts, Marilyn here, Family Heartbeat Mentor. I'm going to be bringing you a series of messages that are all related to each other, um, all having to do with how we receive demonic influence to our lives. And I'll be talking about um, levels of demonic influence, six levels of demonic influence. I'm going to talk about um, the relational path to captivity because everything is about relationships and how we relate with ideas, with truth, with one another, with our circumstances, that sort of thing. So it's about the relational path that brings us into captivity. I'm going to talk about on this message, what is your emotional base? Now all of these messages are designed to help you very practically see how you cooperate with the enemy in your life relationally to help him gain entrance to your life. And when you realize that there are some behaviors in place in your life that have been demonically influenced, I have found that um, people are much more eager to make changes in their life when they realize that there is an outside person pressuring them, causing them to do things that they would not normally have considered doing had they thought they were the only ones involved. Well, so um, I have seen uh, in recent, this last year, a lot of people getting set free hearing these messages. Um, I'm, I'll be talking about strongholds, uh, 10 in particular. And so this is just a lot, like a little introduction to all of this, these sorts of topics for you so that you can anticipate the um, future videos coming to you. I want you to be watching for them so that you can um, it, begin to examine how you've allowed the enemy entrance to your life and kick him out of your life for good so that you can apprehend the kingdom of heaven and all that God has for you. So in this message, I am going to talk. It's a very short message. Uh, what is your emotional base? This is just to help us get started in understanding that everything springs from how we relate. Our entire life springs from how we relate. You see, Jesus died to give us the abundant life. To participate in the abundant life, however, we must have an emotional base that is made up of love and generosity because that is what the kingdom of heaven operates in love and generosity and our emotional base is the foundation of all of our other emotions no matter what the emotional base is made of it's the place from which all of our other emotions evolve and flow from. Therefore, the base emotion of love is the guiding emotion that affects and influences all our other emotions. And when love is our base emotion or our basic attitude toward life, we will grow into every healthy, positive emotion. And dozens of positive emotions naturally emerge from the base emotion of love. So can you see why the Empowered Hearts Ministry focuses on learning how to love much and well? When love is your base emotion or attitude toward life, you will grow into 
every healthy positive emotion but you need the Holy Spirit and the power of God to come into God's kind of love so it might be beneficial to identify the one emotion that will always be absent when love is our base emotion it can be found in the scripture that talks about perfect love casts out fear Faith is made perfect in love. You see, fear is cast out by perfect love. Fear and love cannot actually coexist to the degree that we are established in and experiencing God's love. Fear is driven out. And here in um, 2 Timothy 1, 7, For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And so we see love and fear grouped together in this scripture verse. God isn't given us fear. He's given us love. So when love is there, fear is cast out. They cannot coexist. So love is the light that drives out the darkness of fear. It's impossible to experience the abundant life beyond your experience of God's incredible love. So if you have fear operating in your life, please consider the question, where is the love? Because perfect love casts out fear you see and our faith is made perfect in love i love these passages and they're so full of hope we do not need to live in fear love must become the constant in our life to experience more and more of god's blessings in his kingdom here on earth we must make love our emotional base and so here I wanted to uh, begin, uh, take one of several of these uh, strongholds that I'm going to be talking about in the coming months. Uh, this one is about fear. And I wanted to show a little path, uh, a relational path that brings us into more and more bondage and so it, this is relational and so let's begin with just um, behaviors that we don't even really think of as wrong we might feel a little unprotected or we might feel untrusting or or doubting or we might be timid and children you can see some of these things in children at times and uh, fear of man or shyness or some kind of residual shyness due to insecurity from when you were younger. Uh, you might have a privatizing approach to um, life and a hiding and need to hide. Okay, so these behaviors actually um, give you an emotional base of fear and so your emotional base of fear leads you to do these kinds of behaviors and on the surface and when they're not very strong in you yet as a child they can seem um, somewhat innocent you know that a child just needs to grow and become more well-rounded and overcome these little tendencies these negative tendencies but if they haven't learned to overcome these tendencies, then some of those behaviors will go deeper into um, more serious behaviors. For instance, um, the timid person or the person who hides or is insecure, is overly private, um, they're self-protecting all the time, or they're untrusting, um, they might uh, lean toward chronic anxiety or stress. They might have more worry in their life. Um, they can become fickle because they'll waver and they'll be inconstant due to fear. They'll be unstable and they might have a changeable mind easily changed or they won't be firm in their purpose. Um, 
this self-protecting and guarded person can become cowardly. They can become resistant to life and to the changes that life brings. They can become resistant to God's dealings, all because of fear. And these are just regular behaviors that you would notice in people. But you're actually allowing the enemy influence and entrance into your life when giving yourself over to these behaviors you see these are behaviors to overcome and you know when you've got your um with somebody regularly who is guarded and they're self-protecting and they're changing their mind all the time or they're unstable or inconstant you don't even know where you stand with such a person because they're fickle they're changing their mind a lot you don't know where you stand with them you see how these are relational behaviors that need to Attention. They actually affect the quality of your relationship with another person. And then if you go deeper in allowing fear to gain a stronghold in your life, then you can become really legalistic because of how guarded you've been. You could maintain a real smallish lifestyle in order to control your fears. You might end up with phobias of some sort, nightmares or terror. Uh, you might end up having some kind of a fear of death or or um, religious bondage. You know, religious bondage is something that's very common due to legalistic practices. And when people are fearful, they don't walk in faith. So they can't trust God for the processes of coming into uh, the good things that God has for them. And so they... Uh, set up lots of rules and and becoming legalistic and how they approach righteousness because it's something that they can control. Faith indicates that you would be out of control and so that is too fearful for them. But see, God is not given a spirit of fear. Where is that coming from? God hasn't given it. That spirit of fear is coming from the enemy. And so by activating these behaviors, you're actually agreeing with the enemy's influence in your life and allowing him to take you into further bondage. So when the heart is governed by fear, it is not set right in love. And there is no love or soundness of mind in a very fearful person who doesn't deal correctly when tempted by fear. Those who do not have love do not know God. Fear is basically having faith in bad things happening instead of faith for the good things. And fear opposes God and resists his hand of correction. So this relational pathway begins with the need simply to self-protect. So that person pulls back, they erect barriers to keep people from getting too close, and they sometimes isolate and disconnect and disassociate. And to justify the isolation, the person must pretend that things don't matter people, relationships, any ground that is gained in growth, testimonies. It's almost like they don't happen for that person. Even if they do happen, they move on as though those things didn't happen and they have to repeat those lessons over and over and over. They become fickle in their relationships so others don't know where they stand with them. And other people feel like they're starting over with the person who seems to have forgotten everything that's happened in the relationship to build it. The person doesn't know how to build their life from one experience to another, which can lead to being in a constant state of resistance to things that are good for them. The hand of God is good for us. And to be resistant to the hand of God, that's a scary place to be. But you know, to the extreme that a person does this for the decades of his life, it can lead to senility. It can lead to dementia. 
It could even lead to insanity. God forbid the spirit of fear can take a person into such bondage where they just lose the soundness of mind. You know, I find it very interesting that God has so much to say about fear and love together. For you have not received the spirit of bondage akin to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. That's Romans 8, 15. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. You see, the longer you go in allowing fear to dictate your behaviors and how you live your life, the more extreme your bondage becomes. And it will affect... It will eventually affect your physical well-being, your, your neurology, your mind, and you will lose the soundness of mind. And so, see how interesting this is, that there is a relational path way to bondage to allowing demonic influence but it starts on the surface with little behaviors that you wouldn't even think really are anything you see they're just little negative things like timidity so you wouldn't think that something or shyness you wouldn't think that something but it is something don't label your children with shyness. Oh, they're just shy. Don't do that to your children. This is something for them to learn how to overcome. It's something for you to help them to overcome, moms. So you see how if your emotional base is rooted in fear, how your whole life is affected by that. You know, a fearful person is going to live a smallish life. Chances are they won't accomplish much of, much of anything with their life because of fear. Do you know that it's God's love as an emotional base that causes people to to grow their capacity for life, to reach out and care about other people's concerns. See how important it is to address your emotional base. And this is what I'm wanting to help you with in the coming videos, talking about uh, particular strongholds and showing the relational path to captivity. And then we'll also be talking about the six levels of demonic influence. And that's regression, repression, suppression, depression, oppression, and obsession. And you will be able to see yourself in these messages and see where you have allowed Satan to gain entrance to your life so that you can take it to the Lord and get him off your soul. Thank you, Lord. I pray that this has given you something to think about and I bless you with insight and revelation for what God wants to do in you in these coming messages, okay? I I know that God has a lot that he is wanting to show you and he wants to help you to overcome so that you can live in the kingdom of heaven receiving his blessings for the overcoming life. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to go and get on with another message for you. Uh, Jesus loves you. God loves you. I love you. And don't forget to love on those precious kiddos today. They're dear to the Lord. Bye-bye.